Welcome to Inside the Interviews, guys. Just before this episode starts, I just wanted to briefly kind of say that uh, if you are listening to this on YouTube, this will be the last episode on YouTube and I'll be continuing the podcast on Anchor and um, it will be a, and it basically it will be episode two at this point because I've already done episode one to introduce the podcast already. Um, of course, when it comes to Anchor, if you have Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, any type of podcasting or main podcasting um, app or site, it, my podcast will be on there. So just type in inside the intervals or just click the link in my bio or description or whatever and you'll find it. And um, yeah, so with that being said, guys, uh, sorry for the inconvenience about YouTube. It's just that uh, the audio files have not been working properly when it's been going to Anchor. So I've had to say, you know what, I'm going to start afresh again on Anchor. And plus with YouTube, my podcast isn't really visual. It's more to do with audio. So again, Anchor seemed like the best choice and the best place for it to come to there. And also it gives me a chance to focus on my original ideas on the YouTube channel. So yeah, uh, with that being said, guys, you know, as usual, follow my social media sites, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will leave a link in the bio just so you guys can click on it. And yes, yeah, stay tuned for the podcast. Stay tuned for this episode. It's really good. Uh, definitely got some topics I've been wanting to talk about for the last couple of days. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy. Welcome back to Inside Intervals, guys. Thank you for tuning in again. Thank you for listening. And I hope you guys can enjoy the podcast and just sit back and relax. So yeah, let's get into today's NBA topic. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Another episode. Let's get into today's NBA topics. Definitely topics I've been wanting to discuss, and it's definitely interesting. So I've got two topics I want to talk about. Um, it's definitely been a couple of days since these things have happened, and I kind of just want to, to let it flow, let to see what other people was, would say about it, then kind of just gather my thoughts and what I think about it. But yeah, let's start off with All-Star Weekend. It was a good event, good event, definitely good. Obviously, I don't think it was the better of years because of that crowd atmosphere not being there due to, obviously, the pandemic and whatnot. But um, other than that, it was still good to see. I think the only event I could say that was lacklustre for me, really lacklustre, was um, the dunk contest. But let's talk about that a little bit later on. I want to talk about the skill challenge and the three-point contest, which is, which have become my favourites of All-Star Weekend right now. So let's start off with the skills challenge. Uh, I think the finals was Sabonis and uh, Vucevic. Definitely two, in two interesting centres. Two of, they're on the two of the most upcoming teams right now. And uh, all I can say is that Sabonis definitely did a good job of winning it because what I've realised now is that, um, you know, before the skills challenge, you know, it was about point guards and guards winning it, maybe an odd small forward here and there. But now I'm starting to see that centres are becoming a lot more versatile and it shows that, you know, they can pass the ball, they can shoot the three, you know, defend it and all sorts. But obviously the skills challenge kind of just shows basically your offensive build, basically. So with that being said, uh, it's definitely interesting that Sabonis won it. Um, definitely, it was a good watch. Definitely a good watch. Um, like I said before, watching these type of players do what they do at their height, it's not expected. It was. It's not the average of center. It's not an average thing for a center to do. Whereas now, it seems like more centers are a lot more versatile in their game, in passing and shooting the ball and whatnot. So yeah. Definitely uh, congrats to Sabonis. Congrats to the other contestants too, you know, to CB3, uh, Covington, um, obviously um, Vucevic. Like, you know, this was definitely an interesting uh, thing to watch. I've definitely found myself really interested because before the skills challenge wasn't as interesting to me. It was a good it was a good watch always, but it just wasn't as interesting. I always put, you know, the dunk contest and the three-point contest, then the skills challenge sort of thing. But now the skills challenge over the last maybe what five to six years, it has been more interesting for me to watch. And uh definitely, you know, we're seeing a lot more people become more versatile from that prior to in the in the in the, in the season before All-Star Weekend. So Definitely look out for a lot of these players who have, who have, who are in these contests and you can definitely see why they've been picked for these exact events. Yeah. 
So let's move on to the three point contest. I think all of all of the lists, all of the lists when it comes to the three point contest, uh, you know, it is definitely interesting to see. If Steph Curry is not in it, then you're most likely thinking, what the heck happened that season for him? But yeah, Curry was in it. Uh, he was in the finals with Mike Conley. Very interesting. Mike Conley is definitely a f good three-point shooter. And it's his first all-star appearance as well, which is surprising because, again, he has averaged over the last year's 20-plus points and a crazy amount of assists and rebounds and whatnot. And I'm just thinking, why has it, has it been his first all-star appearance? And this is when he's going off into the midst of his, out of his prime to into, obviously, the last final couple of years now. But, hey, it is what it is. He's doing well in the Utah Jazz Got to give him a big shout because if Curry didn't make that last shot, he would have probably lost. I can't lie to you. He probably would have lost. And it was definitely interesting to see Curry come back, especially from the injury, shouting out Clay Thompson as well. Because normally that's the thing. Those two, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, if you know they're going to be in the three-point contest, you know it's going to be interesting to watch because these guys' motors when it comes to shooting, it once, it once they make one, they'll make, keep on making the rest. They'll barely miss. That's the thing about them. But also shout out to the other contestants as well. You saw Damian Lillard, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. I think it was definitely interesting. Definitely a good pick of guys who were shooting the three ball this year. Definitely interesting to watch. Like, you know, it doesn't get boring watching not even not even just one of these players. All of them did shot pretty the ball pretty well. It's over 15 for points for a lot of for all the guys, pretty much. So definitely interesting watch. Uh, you know, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, see the highlights. Uh, all I can say is that, yeah, Steph Curry did his thing, but do not, don't knock the other guys as well. The other guys were there and they performed and did what they could. Mike Conley was so close to winning it, so close. Yeah, so let's get on to the dunk contest. Now, the dunk contest for me, it has been very, very, um, <clears throat> excuse me, lacklustre. Very lacklustre. All I can say is that, I just don't feel that, you know, the person that won it was, uh, I mean, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, it wasn't that it was bad. It was just that, I don't know. It was really weird. It wasn't like, you know, obviously, Anthony Simmons, sorry, say Simmons didn't deserve to win or anything like that. But I just felt like the dunks he did wasn't as wasn't as i mean there was some they were trying he was trying to be creative but they weren't as well performed when he did it and it, they did look simple compared to other some of the other dunks i saw like cassius stanley i felt like he had so much potential to do certain dunks but when you know when we saw what happened he i think it was his second go he fumbled a lot of the dunks and it was just like damn he's really trying to do something but it's just not working and he just had to do a simple Tomahawk dunk and yeah, you know, it, and the thing is, he has, he has a good vertical. And I think it, it's hard, you know. I, I do think over the years it is hard because a lot of the dunks that we've seen over the years in the dunk contest, a lot of it's been done. You know, the free throw line, the 360 spin dunk. It's just, yeah, you know, all a lot of this stuff has been done. We've seen it and we want to see different things. And of course, I think the last dunk contest, which that was really good, was obviously... Um, I think it was the ones where Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon were in it. And yeah, you know, it was definitely interesting. Definitely interesting to see uh, this dunk contest. I mean, it was interesting when I first looked at it. I thought, okay, you know, it's only the first round. But then second and first round, I felt like, yeah, it just became lacklustre for me. And I could saw some of the guys that were trying to actually perform and do well for the dunks. But it just looked like that. Yeah, this is definitely going to be one of those... Um, it's going to be a, a sleeper, basically. I do think Obi had a good... Um, I do think Obi, Obi Toppin had a good... Had a good idea for dunks. See, I think his dunks were pretty cool. Um, but I just don't think Anthony Simons should have won it personally. Not to say he's a bad dunker. But um, he has a good vertical, for especially for his height. But again, I don't see him being a... I didn't see him being the highlight of it. If I could see anybody being the highlight of it, probably, yeah, it probably would have been Obi Toppin, honestly. But, um, yeah, the dunk contest, it's not going to change for now in terms of how and what happens and whatnot. 
And, um, you know, when it comes to voting as well, I think the fans need to start voting. They need to make it a thing where the fans can vote because they're letting people from the side, the commentators and people from the, so not people from the sideline, but commentators who are just, um, you know, they're voting, but then the voting is not really, there's not really a battle. Whereas before it would be a battle, it would be two people vote for this person, two people vote for this person. Then you would have this third extra person, what not saying that, okay, this person, like to kind of decide it. So that's my thing. And I think, um, yeah, fans need to start voting for who has dunk contest or at least get dunk contest champions like Vince Carter, even Michael Jordan. And, you know, like, Previous guys who have won the slam dunk contest who have had crazy dunks, let them vote. Let them vote. I wouldn't let people who are just like average, not so much average, but these players weren't, some of these players weren't consistent dunkers or whatever like that in their career. So the fact that they're commentating now and then they're voting, it's just like, okay, I, I see where you're going with I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. But um, yeah, other than that, it is what it is. Um, you know, dunk contest again. I don't know what it's going to be like next year or for the next recent of year, next more years to come, sorry. So, we'll just have to see. Um, yeah, so moving on to the next one is obviously the All-Star game. All-Star games, very interesting. Giannis, 16 for 16, winning the MVP of the night. Definitely interesting to see. Um, obviously the format of how the All-Star Weekend is done now is definitely gone good again, definitely gone well again. And, um, you know, of course, you know, you're seeing guys like Steph Curry. It's weird not seeing Steph Curry in the All-Star game, but now that he's back, he was, you know, he, it's weird. He caught, he caught an alley oop, him and CP3. And I was kind of surprised that, wow, we don't see this as, as often, but hey, it's the All-Star game. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, with that being said, there was a lot of highlights. Of course, LeBron James did his thing. Uh, team LeBron, I feel like Le whoever LeBron picks, that team is going to going to win, basically. Uh, Durant, you know, again, he, he had a chance. I feel like Durant had, cha had a chance to pick certain players, but he just chose not to. So he went with like whoever he knows best. And yeah, it was just like, I felt like it could have been, it could have been a lot better. You know, in terms of in, in Durant's path of picking certain players and whatnot. But hey, it is what it is. It's just the all-star game. Um, you know, I think we all know that when LeBron picks a team, he wants to win. Just because it's all-star, all-star weekend. And yeah, it, it worked out. You know, his team won, of course, 170 to 150. Uh, if you haven't seen the highlights, go and check it out. It's definitely interesting game. One of the probably one of the most better games I've seen from the All-Star Weekend. And it's just unfortunate again that the crowd atmosphere has not been the same so yeah with that being said um that's the only thing that was mainly missing for me is the crowd atmosphere we didn't even get to see a celebrity all-star game as well because because of because of it basically because of the pandemic and whatnot and even the world versus usa t uh, game nowhere to be seen but all because of what's going on right now but yeah other than that all-star weekend was still enjoyable despite the one contest and um, yeah, if you guys, like I said, if you guys haven't seen any of it, check out the highlights. Very good. Very interesting. Uh, you won't be bored. Maybe on a dunk contest, maybe on then. But yeah, other than that, let's get into the next topic I've been wanting to talk about because this is a, it's not a blockbuster trade, but it's a trade nonetheless that nobody was really kind of expecting. And everybody just kind of thinks that now like, wow, this is what is going on. So, yeah, Blake Griffin, as you know, Blake Griffin, ha within the last, I'll probably say last two, three years, haven't heard much from him, went to Detroit, hasn't been as capable as he wants to be. He's having, the, he's having a real season low in a lot of his points, rebounds and assists, a lot of his averages, and yeah. You know, the Detroit Pistons said they were going to, you know, part ways with him. That's what they did. Now, Griffin has signed with the Nets. The Brooklyn Nets. Out of all teams, that's the thing. And here's my thing. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, he's not going to add depth for and do anything. I think he's going to add depth. I think he's going to be one of those sleeper players that's just going to let everybody else do their thing. When they get cold, maybe he will shine. 
people that are even talking about, oh, he hasn't done the ball since 2019 or 2018 or something like that. And I'm thinking, hey, here's where it is. I'm sure when he's at the best, he might dunk the ball because that's what happens. I think that's what happens. Literally, I think he's just tired of being. He was tired of being on that team where he wasn't really contending, wasn't really doing anything. You know, they traded away Andre Drummond, and pretty much Griffin was left on his own with uh, Derrick Rose. And of, of course, Derrick Rose hasn't been the same type of player, and now he's gone back to the Knicks. He was pretty much alone, and I think the Pistons they've gone into that rebuild mode where I felt like they had a chance to maybe, you know, make a few playoff runs and see what would have happened, but. Yeah, they're fully rebuilding. Maybe it's the best thing as well, you know, because the plays they did get in the last couple of years hasn't been the best for them, but it is what it is. Maybe the coaching can kind of just change that. So now let's focus on the Brooklyn Nets. Now, of course, um, the Nets still don't have a solid big man. So I think getting Blake kind of, kind of rectifies that but at the same time we haven't seen Blake do much in the season so if Blake starts showing out in these Brooklyn games just know that he didn't want to play in Detroit I think that's personally where it is I think I think a lot of people know that it's that's where it was he just didn't want to play in Detroit I think it it was lackluster for him to play there and I do agree that you know Blake is you know he's come out of, he's just come out he's come out of his prime not the same Blake Griffin as he used to be but again, I do feel that like he has become a bit more versatile, low key. And I think a lot of people are not paying attention to that because before Blake wasn't shooting the ball, he was only dunking, attacking the paint, didn't really have a mid range or a three point shot. And now he started, and over the years he developed that. So now, of course, his shooting percentage is going to be down. Of course, his stats are going to be down due to what he's doing. So now maybe they can just make him play and go back to how he originally what he was doing because you know I haven't seen Blake do or even be spoken about anything popular like that for the last how many years now so again maybe you know him being on this team can kind of like maybe give them that sort of depth and I think it and I think it will but also I do say this is that it's crazy how Durant is doing everything in his power to just stop a 36-year-old LeBron James. Now, we've seen people beat LeBron James before in his prime. Dirk Nowitzki was one of them. And, of course, the Spurs, Tony Parker, Manu, Manu Ginobili, Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan. We've all seen it. We've, it's possible. It might not be possible all the time, but we have seen it. So, my thing is this. The fact that Durant has gone to the Nets... He just wanted him and Kyrie to play on that team. Then they get James Harden, because James Harden wanted the trade. Now they got Blake Griffin. If the Nets don't win, it is a bust. If they do win, then hey, all right, that's cool and everything. But can you do, do the Nets have enough money to keep these type of star players? Maybe they can pay Blake a little bit smaller than Durant, KD. Sorry, um, KD. James Harden and Kyrie, maybe, but it's mad because KD and Durant got the max. They both got max contracts. So where is the thinking? Where is the thinking here? You get James Harden, who is a max player, who's coming off a, a whatever hundred mil, two hundred mil deal with the Houston Rockets, and now you're telling me that you want to get Blake Griffin. Now Blake, I don't think he, like I said, he won't be getting paid as much. But when it comes to... But look at the rest of the three. How are they going to keep this team together, honestly? And now they want a centre. Now the, now the Nets are looking to go after Andre Drummond or DeMarcus Cousins. This is what I'm talking about. This is the type of thing we're talking about. Now, there have been super teams, but there have only been super teams if they if it's made right. If it's made right. Ever since Duran has done his own thing, everybody wants their own... Everybody, wants, everybody wanted their own super team. When Kawhi went to the Raptors, things kind of changed. You saw that. You saw that different players were getting, it was more to do with duos rather than trios of, or quads or a full five team. It's just like, what are you doing? Like, what, what is going on in the league right now? Me personally. And I feel sorry for a lot of the teams, yeah, that are striving, like the Sixers and Utah are striving. And if they were to lose in the playoffs here yeah, to these teams, to a team like the Nets or whatever, it's like, rah, 
what is going on? Now, why I'm saying this, it is basketball, so things can change. And I don't think, me personally, I think the Nets can get to the conference finals. Finals, if they do get there, depending on who they get, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's it's a really it's a really hard thing to say right now. We just have to wait until the playoffs because the playoffs is a different animal, and we've seen that. So let's just see what happens in the Nets because it's gonna be really funny when if they lose, who's gonna go? That team's probably gonna split up. I'll be surprised if they stay together. But doing all this to what? Just to win a champion? And I understand. Hey, listen. The game is about winning championships, and I get that. But you know, where's your where's your integrity? Like integrity in terms of the game. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just kind of it sucks. And the thing is, I don't blame Blake for going there. I wouldn't even blame Andre Drummond if he goes there, because apparently the Nets are the front runners and the Lakers are the front runners. I think he would have a better time with these two other teams that are interested in him, in the Clippers or the Warriors. I think those two teams need a centre caliber player for Andre Drummond. Yeah? Blake, and even Blake. Blake would have been better off on those teams as well. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So it's, gonna, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what Blake can do and how the Nets are going to move going forward. Because if they win it all, them staying together, it's probably more of a, it's probably a 70 to 80% chance. Them losing, first one to go, I, I can honestly sit here and say with hand on my heart, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Kyrie. I can't lie to you. Because Kyrie literally just wanted him and KD to play with the Nets. So, and the Nets have done it again. They've built a, they've built a super team that might not work. They did it with Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, Andre and oh, sorry, Andre Kuklenko. They did it with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. Both of them out of their primes. So here's my thinking. Here's my thinking. Kyrie's still in his prime. James Harden's still in his prime. KD's still in his prime. Blake is not really in his prime. DeAndre Jordan, who is there, is not really in his prime. So Let's just see what happens because I feel like it's going to be a whole a whole shambles, a real whole shambles. So, yeah. <laughs> Whew, boy, I would not be surprised if LeBron wins it, if the Lakers win it again, or if Utah or some underdog team just takes them out. I think that's just going to be like, well, this is what happens. As much as it is a super team, it is beatable. And they are. They are. If you can expose the weekend areas of a team like that, then you're, you should be fine. You should be fine. But with that being said, guys, that's pretty much it for the end of the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast today. If you did, please don't forget to share this podcast. Uh, don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the page and follow for more podcast episodes. Like I said, I'm going to try and get in twice a month. And then when it comes to the playoffs, I do want to be a bit more frequent. So that being said, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.